Guys, we just got our first look at Black Kersantan yeah. in live action. And we have a lot to talk about. Guys, Chris and Rob here, the Jersey Comic Crew. And today we are talking about where Black Kersantan came from, which is mostly the comics, where we might see him next, how it relates to Boba or possibly other characters forming in this Disney Plus Star Wars universe. So Rob, I'm very excited about Black Kersantan. You know I'm a huge fan of his oh, from he, the comics. He's amazing. And I'm so ready to get this conversation going. So a couple of things we got to get out the way first, right? We got to like learn about his early beginnings and then like what he kind of does and the, his abilities before we get into what he's done in the comics where we might see him. So some basic information for you guys here. Obviously, he is a Wookiee, right? He's a Wookiee gladiator and he's, he's working for the Huts. You know that because you watch the show just like all of us. And he is well versed in many different weapons. We see him use things like the bowcaster, electric gun, rail gun, thermal detonators, the classic brass knuckles. He has that raw super Wookiee strength. And a fun fact, Chris, in his hands, there's actual metal in his hands, right? So Dr. Afro, a character we're going to touch on in just a moment, uh, did some modifications onto him to give him some metal in his hands so that way his punches are even more brutal. Yes, they are also known as the Knuckle Dusters, which uh, I hope became my, becomes my nickname pretty soon. Uh, it's the most badass thing Cause ever. Because you're, you're old and we got to dust Cause, off yes, your cause, knuckles. Because I'm old and I crack my knuckles and it turns to dust. Um, but yeah, guys, like, yeah, guys, Black Kersantan is no joke. He is menacing just as we saw him on screen. He was a Wookiee that was actually banished from his home world of Kashyyyk yeah, man. for just being just absolutely like think Lobo right he almost like killed people he was demolishing he was a things. bad guy it's a bad guy so he goes off world he finds himself in these pits he's a gladiator fighting sur for survival he becomes champion eventually escapes and then finds himself as a bounty hunter now guys I said he was working for the huts now as we see in the book of Boba Fett but back in the day he worked for the main man himself job of the hut the story of Chrysanthemum working for Jabba the Hutt actually takes place in Star Wars comic issue number 15. Right here for you guys in case you want to read it yourselves. But during this issue and during the storyline, Jabba the Hutt actually sends Chrysanthemum out to kill somebody who stopped his ward attacks on the moisture farms on Tatooine, a main way Jabba was getting his money. During this mission, Chrysanthemum kidnaps and tortures Uncle Owen, that's right, Luke Skywalker's uncle, to get information on who stopped the ward attacks on the planet. Turns out it was the one and only Ben Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi. They get into a fierce battle, and that gives the iconic slash scar mark that we see on Chris Anton's face. This brings me to the big question I have for you, Chris. Yes. Knowing this, and knowing we're getting an Obi-Wan series, do you think we're going to see a flashback fight sequence of Obi-Wan versus Chris Anton, seeing the iconic slash on the live screen? I would love to. Absolutely, but I don't think we're going to. And um, why? The reason is is because you have the Obi Wan series focusing obviously on that time where he's on Tatooine looking over Luke. Yeah. Technically, that falls into it. But we have our big bad with Darth Vader, right? We know yeah. Hayden Christensen's going to be there. We know Vader's going to be a part of the series, looking for you know surviving Jedi. There's going to be another fight between those two. I don't see how you derail that with Black Chrysanthemum. I think they're going to save Chrysanthemum for another time. Maybe reference it, but I don't know if we're going to see it in live action or if in this Obi-Wan series. I, I, I really hope so. Maybe like the first episode, we see that big fight scene and then That'd they never see each other again and it continues on the Obi-Wan story. I don't even know. One thing I wanted to mention to you guys at home and to Chris, obviously, he already knows where we're going with this, right? There's this scene in the Book of Boba Fett episode two where Black Chrysanthemum first comes out the screen, right? And there's this organic tension between Boba Fett and Chrysanthemum. Boba Fett even says it doesn't matter how many gladiators you hire th talking to the Huts. He's not going to change his mind. He's still going to be the king, right? So obviously there's this history that hasn't really been explored between the two characters. You are correct, Rob. And for anyone at home, if you picked up the Darth Vader comics, uh, right in the first issue, they are together. And they both used to work for Jabba the Hutt. So Vader actually goes to Tatooine to negotiate kind of trade routes and, and different you know supplies for the empire after the battle of yavin so this is after luke destroys the death star okay but while he's there negotiating with jabba he also asked jabba for two of his best bounty hunters for a personal mission to find out this secret agent of the emperor that was kind of hanging over his head the emperor wasn't giving vader 
all this information after, you know, in his mind, he let the Death Star be destroyed. So Vader actually hires Boba Fett and Black Kersantan, who were both working for Jabba at the time. Mm -hmm. And he sends Black Kersantan to find this agent who is, you know, somewhere on Tatooine doing something for the information. And then he sends Boba to find Luke Skywalker, who at the time oh. doesn't know it's his son. He's just the young rebel who destroyed the Death Star. But focusing on Kersantan, he actually finds this agent named Silo, who is kind of illegally off-worlding a bunch of these alien parts, which seem to be kind Sketchy. of the test subjects for, like, the reincarnation of Palpatine or stuff we even see in Mandalorian. So he captures him, tortures him, brings him back to Vader, and Vader eventually tortures and kills him because there can be no one but Vader. So a couple of issues later, in Darth Vader issue number seven, we see the events of what happens to Kersantan after this mission is over. He gets a call to a bounty hunter summit and is as cool as you might expect, guys. At this summit, we see familiar bounty hunters like Bosk, IG-90, Beatbox, and some various other bounty hunters and evil doers on the planet Suntold. There, Black Kersantan enters into a Wookiee fighting pit in this fighting pit, he strangles one of the fighters to take their spots in this Wookiee fighting tournament. He starts killing everybody else by brutally beating them to death, earning him the victory in this fighting pit. Now, the reason he wants to win this fighting pit and the whole purpose of this fighting pit was to join a new job, right? To become a new member on this heist. We find out the one who organized the invitation was none other than Dr. Afra. Dr. Afra set the invitation to the Bounty Hunter Summit. She wanted to get the best of the best for this planned heist that she has. The heist was to steal this already stolen treasure that was on its way to the Empire. She would pay the willing participants in the heist a portion of the stolen fortune. During the heist mission, we see Black Chrysanthemum piloting the ship that they're all on, hiding behind an asteroid, safely navigating them to freedom and all in a lot of loot, Chris. Yeah, and thanks to all this you know, newfound riches, She's able to pay Black Chrysanthemum a little more for kind of helping out the most. And he ends up sticking around yeah. for a while. So to me, Rob, this was a big hint as far as we saw in Book of Boba Fett. We might possibly be getting Afra in the live action Ooh. or her own show. She is a massive character that has been blossoming for the last couple of years okay. in the Star Wars comic universe. She has her own book. She's on a second volume right now. Uh, she was invented by Kieran Gillen during that Darth Vader phase. And she's a great character. If you like Indiana Jones with a side of thievery, kind of like Han Solo mixed with Indiana Jones, but a female version, this is a great character for you. And if Black Chrysanthemum is a hint, Rob, we could possibly be seeing her pretty soon. <laughs> I think that'd be fantastic. I love that character. I really hope we see her live action. She's a fantastic character, like Chris to say. Definitely underselling the character. Very important. And one of the moments that we see her shine along with Black Chrysanthemum is this crossover comic book event the Screaming Citadel with Darth Vader, Dr. Aphra, and the rest of the Star Wars gang. Yeah, like Rob said, during this time, a bunch of different things happen. Mm -hmm. Chrysanthemum attacks the Millennium Falcon, trying to grab Luke Skywalker and get into a fight with Chewbacca, which- Wookiee on Wookiee that. crime. Of course, basically. So after this Wookiee brawl, sometime later, Chrysanthemum and Aphra have kind of a falling out, and this is after the time period where she gives him his knuckle dusters. Okay. She's the one who actually does the surgery on him to give him those knuckle dusters. Yeah. So he goes back and starts working for Vader again. I know this is like a drama. Of it's a no telenovela. It is. It's fantastic. And then Vader hires Chrysanthemum again to kill Afro. Oh my God. Because Afro was not really his apprentice, but like his number two. She betrays him, is stealing stuff from the Empire, is doing her own thing, and kind of knew he was going to kill her anyway. So he sends Chrysanthemum to find her location to bring him to her to kill her. Chrysanthemum brings her to him. Vader throws her out of an airlock, like into open space. Oh. But Kersantin, having a little bit of a heart, actually took a liking to Aphra, saves her, grabs her from deep space when she was out for a couple seconds. It wasn't like minutes or anything. Saves her life and now is kind of like helping her out every once in a while. He occasionally comes by and has a heart for her. So I think this would be great to see live action. I, I want that to happen so bad, right? Like seeing this Black Crescent and Dr. Afro story flushed out more with Vader would be fantastic to kind of get another piece of that puzzle that we didn't know essentially brought to life. Take it from the comics, bring it to the mainstream audience that we know more about. And we can learn more about this 
Bounty Hunter world, this darker side of it. Like, if Mando's the light side of the Bounty Hunter is good, what's the evil side that we're kind of getting, right? So I would be down for that. I would love a Dr. Afro show. But knowing that Black Chrysanthemum's history was that he was a Wookiee soldier back on Kashyyyk and then got kicked off, I want to see that story. But I don't think you could have, like, a Black Chrysanthemum show as much as I like the character, right? Like, he's an amazing side character. But, like, I want to see the world of the Wookiees and Kashyyyk fleshed out more, right? So maybe if it's, like, a bounty hunter show, right? Or some other, like, Wookiee, like, hero. And it's, like, the foil to Black or Stanton. And then we see that Wookiee homeworld. Like, we're getting so much of that now in the Book of Boba Fett. Like, like the yeah. Tusken Raiders, they've evolved and developed. And now we understand them culturally. As much as I want a Dr. Aphra show, like... I feel like that would rob, almost rob us of like getting this backstory with Black Chrysanthemum and Kashyyyk and learn more about the Wookiee Warriors. I don't necessarily think that. I think if they're working together or, you know, put with each other, I think you might get that kind of scene where like after, you know, the brutal beatings and like the upgrades to his knuckles and all the craziness that he is about, you could get a scene kind of similar to what we saw with Ahsoka and Grogu, where you find out Grogu's story through a conversation, through a, yeah. a calm part of the episode, right? Maybe with Chrysanthemum, they'll actually do a flashback where you can see it kind of like combining what they did with Mandalorian and what they're doing with Boba Fett, where you're seeing it happen. Mm -hmm. So maybe Chrysanthemum speaking in, you know, uh, I believe the, the language is called Shriwook, <laughs> but he's speaking and Aphra is kind of like reiterating, oh, so this this is what happened. It kind of goes back. And he could tell us the end of the story and how he got a call off. We can still see the Kashyyyk world. It's Exactly. So, like, maybe it's just one episode out of this possible Doctor Afra show okay. that you get a little more of that backstory and understand Chrysanthemum more as he's kind of piecing together where he's going to show up. Now, with that being said, guys, hopefully you got some more information about Black Chrysanthemum. We are sure to see him more in the Book of Boba Fett and hopefully in other Star Wars projects down the road. Let us know what you thought of this episode that we did for you guys and what you think of Black Chrysanthemum down in the comments below. And guys, thanks so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up, like, really helps the channel out a lot. If you're new, subscribe and turn on those notifications. You don't want to miss any more of our coverage of Book of Boba Fett, Star Wars, anything. And as always, if you missed anything, it is on the channel for you at all times. And as always, I'm Chris Heller. That's Rob Moran. We're the Jersey Comic Group. And we'll see you next time.